G'day guys, welcome back to Supercoach with Dion. welcome to the Round 23 review, hope you're all well. I'll tell you what, we've got one week to go, congratulations if you're in any of your Supercoach Grand Finals, I think the record, what I've seen anyway, is 14, remember we can be in 20 leagues this year, so 14 is the highest I've seen so far, if you're higher than 14, let me know down in the comments section below, we'll give you a bit of a shout out, a bit of kudos to you, but uh, this weekend, it wasn't a great weekend of football for me. Now, the Supercoach score, 24.55. Yeah, probably par around my rank. Bit of a green arrow there, which was nice. Went up a few spots. But Nash Man unfortunately, lost his grand final by about four goals in the end. Super proud of the boys, though. But a bit of a sour note to end the season there. And I also went to the G to watch the Lions and the Pies. And I tell you what, Brisbane, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to rant here. It's not the time to rant, but... The last two weeks, we should have just iced the game very, very early on, but left the door open to two solid opponents and absolutely paid the price. I said last week again, bad kicking is bad football. And again, that was a case. A bit of selfish football at times as well. A lack of awareness. You know, I'm talking about a bit of selfish play from Joey. I'll, I'll give a rocket to a couple. And Zach the Rat Bailey, I love the man, don't get me wrong. But you've got to have better awareness than that, right? You know, if he had have just kicked the ball, I think he was about, what, 50, 60 out from goal, got run down. I forget who it was, but great tackle. Oh, the, the game probably turns in a different direction because he probably either passed it to someone, gets a shot on goal, just a point even, and it's at least a draw. But uh, no sour grapes here. We lost the game ourselves and no one else to blame apart from ourselves. But I just want to see a win at the G. Marvel's cool for Brisbane, but the G absolutely hate it and i hate going there as well because so many dead ends with these mcc you know you go mcc gate here like all right we'll go around the other way mcc gate there so we go up with these tunnels got lost for about 10 minutes just a shocking shocking day in the end but can't complain most likely playing finals at this stage anyway but back to the super coach at 789 for a season rank this is going to be a very very quick review uh next week i'll do a bit of a season review go into a lot of depth lessons learned and all the rest but really for this week it's going to be an ultra short one and uh there's not a lot that i can do anyway because i am tradeless i wasn't going to make a trade last week but i decided to it wasn't the right one but it is what it is hopefully i'm not going to be facing any donuts this week so uh this week in the potty as well we have a very very special guest now i did put a post on twitter a bit of a who am i and most people have guessed it already so far so i'll give you the same clues if you're not on x twitter x you know what i mean uh, number one the man has a very very soothing voice number two he produces Supercoach content for the biggest Supercoach community on the planet, if you don't mind. And number three, he has saved our bacon a number of times with our VC and C option there. A little bit of an Easter egg in that sentence there. So you probably know who the great man is. Uh, lots of people have been requesting this fella on the podcast and very happy to announce that uh, we will be having this special guest on this week so certainly look forward to that and uh yeah one more potty after that and we're calling it quits for the season so uh after that on to probably some nbl and bbl super coach and obviously planning ahead for the 2025 afl season as well so that's it for the intro guys hope that you well let's see how the team's looking and i may go through a few captaincy options this week but i think we may have that covered on the potty Now, as I just mentioned, I am officially tradeless and it's not a great feeling, but hopefully, as I said, facing no donuts this week. However, round 24 team sheets can deliver some very, very unexpected news at times and it can deliver some absolute carnage. Now, luckily, I don't own Dan Houston, a very, very highly owned player, particularly in the top 1% in our defensive line. I've actually got seven primos there. Now, Oh, look, I'll quickly explain my trade this week. Now, this isn't going to be a long review, but I need to explain what I did with my last trade last week. So, obviously, Harry Sheasel's out. Now, originally, the plan was to loop Nick Martin. So, it was going to be... Uh, sorry, Martin had the first game, obviously. So, I was going to loop him, see how he scored. If he scored really well, then I was going to trade Sheasel to a forward. And if he did score... Or if he didn't score really well... I'd bring Jack Sinclair in. Now, I was speaking to a few blokes, you know, about who I should be looping and all the rest, and I just 
didn't like Bailey Dale. I've been off Bailey Dale. And it was almost the right decision this week, you know, because he got a 77. So I decided, look, now nah, I've got faith in Nick Martin. He's been playing really well lately. I'm just going to bench Dale and I'll get Sinclair's score instead. And I had tunnel vision for Sinclair. I just thought this is a wonderful draw, Marvel run. I've been missing out on so many good scores from him lately. I just want to jump on the man. And an 86. It just did not work out well for me. And I'll admit this. One thing that I'll admit. Now, I think that I got a bit of a head wobble here. I, I put a post on X saying, you know, who should I loop here? And I put just my defensive line up with Sinclair traded into the side. And I got a few comments like, oh man, like, I just wish like you've planned so well, you've done so well. Look at that, seven primo defenders when uh, people are copping cheese or donuts, this, that, this, that. Um, mind you, Humphreys and Hall, the, oh, you, you wouldn't read about it. They outscore Jack Sinclair this pre So you wouldn't read about it this week. But I sort of thought to myself, yeah, do you know what? Yeah, look look at me go here. I'm going to stick with the seven here. Just not like a brag. It was just, it looked so good. And as I said, it was it was a bit of a mini head wobble. The strategy originally that I was looking to go for, and you know what? I should have stayed disciplined to this strategy. I should have stayed disciplined. I wanted the new shiny toy. As I said, tunnel vision for Jack Sinclair. But the plan was originally, as I said, so it was going to be Martin here. Um, and then see how he goes. If he did score really well, and he did, then I was going to trade Harry Sheasel for Dylan Moore because Dylan Moore was someone that I was just missing out on. Remember, I had Zach Fisher here that I was hoping to just be a really reliable on-field option. Trade the bugger last week. He comes back this week, goes a ton. Just the story of my super coach season. Never again, Zach Fisher, bugger you, mate. But the whole idea of having Fisher there was to be able to loop your Simpkin and, and your Dogger here in particular. With Dylan Moore, he was who Zach Fisher was meant to be. He was a man that was meant to come in this week if Martin scored well. If I had have gone there, I would have won the cash league. I would have done so many great things and really rocketed up the ranks because the difference between getting Sinclair on for Dale, which I had, was what, nine points at the end of the day. But Manor, who I had here for 69 compared to Moore's, what was it, 140? Well, that's a 70 point turnaround. So that is absolutely massive. So yeah, just didn't stay disciplined. And I'll put my hand up for that. I'll admit that. Um, just silly. Should have stuck to the original plan, but I didn't. And it really killed me this week. And Dylan Moore was a man that I was really, really raving about with last week's fixture, obviously against the Tigers, and then this week's fixture as well. Um, just, yeah, just frustrating. But look, it is what it is. Um, that was a trade that I made at the end of the day. Now, I did try to take advantage of some loops here. So Grundy, I actually had for a 68 here. And I thought, you know what? I'm not going to cop that. I'm actually going to move Dogger up and I'm going to take Sean Manor. Sean Manor was on 75, I think, at three-quarter time. No idea what happened here. He, I think he may have gave away 50. I, I don't know. But to end on 69 when I was hoping, you know, you look at 75 at three-quarter time, you think, okay, hopefully 100 here if you look at just the averages from each quarter. To go backwards six points and I lost my cashy by six points, just super frustrating. Neil. I lost out with scaling with Lockie Neal as well. Um, I lost out a point here with Sam Walsh. It was just an absolute killer, you know, but just one of those weeks. Um, I'm not going to go through each play, but Sinclair was really disappointing. Martin was fantastic. Ryan did not see this with a 68. Now, I think it was Lauren. I don't know if you're watching this, Lauren, that asked on the podcast, which defender should I go? I just want to maintain rank. We said Ryan to go with the crowd. I hope you didn't listen to us. And apologies if you did, but no one saw this coming. I don't think a 68. Yeah, really bad luck there, and apologies about that. Dacos witnessed his second quarter firsthand, and it was absolutely magical. Got to take my hat off to the man. Um, damn, buddy Dacos. Uh, Newman with 103, very, very slow start to the game, but really did work his way into it. A little bit of junk time at the end, but 103 over 77, Dale. I'll take that. That's okay, I suppose. Yo with a 114, so I think it was his third quarter for memory. The man was an absolute beast. Clearance, tackling machine, contested. He was one that really, really tried to lift his side, but obviously just couldn't at the end of the day. But very impressed with him, particularly being such a pot in the side. Dale didn't need him with his 77. Now, this is funny here. So decided to roll the dice on Lockie Neal. Originally, he was on 130-something. 
So it was a pretty easy VC take. But when you get to 123, I thought, you know what? I'm probably going to roll the dice here. And it was because of George. It was one of George's reply to a tweet. I put the poll out there. What do I do? And George said, um, yeah, he, he gave a little image there of the dice. He said, roll it, mate. His last two against North, like 160 something, 180 something, I think, from memory. And I thought, you know what? Yeah, I'll take your advice, great man. And even Stevens at the end of the day. But I like to say I had a crack, which was good. I wish I had to chuck the VC on butters. Like the man Janeth did, the, the captaincy hero, I should have just followed what he did. But wanted to go a little bit independent this week and really thought Chockey against that Collingwood midfield could bust out a really, really big score here. It was looking like it at one stage, but yeah, tagged, unfortunately. And um, yeah, it is what it is. But uh, Zeret with a 74, extremely disappointing. Green with a 143 sort of made up for that Zeret type score. Thank you very much, Tommy. Well done, mate. We've seen the good, bad, and the ugly from Tom Green. I've just kept him from the start, owned him from the start. Original plan was to jump off him, remember, at the buy. That would have been perfect if I had have followed my gut again, which I didn't do. I wasn't going to start Dacos. I'd absolutely made up my mind. Had I followed my gut there and traded him in exactly where I'd planned pre-season, would have been beautiful. But again, you live and you learn. Follow your gut, people. Follow your gut. Walsh has been a very, very disappointing own. I hate, I hate owning Sam Walsh over Jordan Dawson. No, Dawson's been up and down as well. But yeah, as a pairing, uh, sorry, well, if you compare the two, Dawson's absolutely came out on top. He has missed a game, I know, but Dowling, I think, or someone covered well for that game, which you've got to take into account. Disappointing Sam Walsh. Um, close to on the never again list, I think, in my books. Uh, gone with a 97, certainly couldn't repeat the heroics from last week. Basically, Harvey's score there. Dog with an 84, like it is what it is. I suppose if you look at last week's score, this is very much a win. Grundy's just nowhere near it at the moment. Um, I say it every week. What what would the maths be like? Yeah, you know, what what's the difference in average since when I jumped on Grundy, when I could have jumped on Sherry at a much cheaper, or when I say much cheaper, at, at definitely a cheaper price, my season would have taken a big, big turn. And then you've got to take into account the VC and the captaincy options. Last couple of weeks, he was an absolute lock and load. I ought to just straight chuck the captain on him. To be honest, I was that confident on Sherry. And that that in itself, being able to captain or vice captain him, is such a huge bonus. And I'm sitting there with Brody Grundy, who I thought was going to be the R2 for the rest of the year at the time of trade. And he was looking like that. But just falling off a cliff, very, very sore. Managed at the moment, not looking good for Brody. Uh, Flanders, 120. Great season for me. Zorks, 108. A-OK. -okay. Henny, 117. Cool. Cordwell, hit the ton. Very nice. Simpkin with a 95. So I really can't complain with that forward line. Simpkin's 95. That's always a big one for me. One of those pod-type forwards. And, you know, it, it's the Simpkins of the world, the Yos, the Newmans, that are really going to make or break me, I think. Um, well, certainly next week in the grand finals anyway. And as I said, decided to end up looping Mana on in place of Grundy, was looking great, made a point on that. So, okay decision, I suppose. So, that's the final team there, guys. Look, best team uh, is most likely this, isn't it? Dale, all right. So, how much did I end with? 28K in the bank. What I would have loved for 28K at some stages, but it's not like I had a couple of hundred K or anything in there. I could have left the trade because it would have had Dale come on for Sinclair, oh, for uh, Sheasel anyway. So it would have been nice to save that trade. Um, would have looked to probably get more in for someone this week up forward. But all right. So can I loop this week? So Reed, I've got down back, is the only man really I can loop with here. We've got Melbourne and Collingwood. So I can loop Dacos, Geelong, and West Coast. I can loop Yo. Richmond, Gold Coast, no good for me down back. North and Hawthorne, no good for me there. And then we get to the Essendon Lions game. Okay, so it's either looping Dacos or Yo. I think probably down there at Geelong. At this stage, Collingwood still have, I think, something to play for, maybe mathematically or not. Probably not. But they want to beat Melbourne anyway. I'll probably loop Yo over him. I think at this stage, unless I can loop in the midfield. So no Melbourne, no Collingwood, no Geelong or West Coast. No Gold Coast, Richmond, Hawthorne or North. Okay, so 
I think I'm just going to loop yo at this stage. I think that's probably the easy one there. Uh, look, does Dowling come back this week? Oh, look, I don't think so. I probably think the safest thing maybe here is just to leave him there for a potential laid out. I need to be looping with the Simpkins manners of the world. Uh, Grundy just leave there. Oh, okay. So Livingston, we need to be careful of loops here. We need to be very careful of loops. Brown, so Brown's no good. Sad. Dowling. Surely Dowling comes back in. He's been playing well in the twos. I've got Dawson. Okay, so I need to be careful here with, with actually using loops. Sorry, this has just gone on and on this video already, hasn't it? Sorry, just tune out, guys. Tune out. Um, all right, so Mana, he plays a second game. That's very easy there. So he'll need to score what for me in order to take it. Do you know what? I probably wouldn't even take an 80. Like, he's got to score 90 plus. Who are Freo playing? So, Freo are playing last game against Port. Simpkin against Hawthorne. No real day. Yeah, I'll probably just chuck it on Manor, I think, for now. Now, captain and vice captain. As I said, I'm not even going to go into it for this video. I'm not going to go into all the different options because we are getting, we, we will have two of the absolute masters. Of the VC and captain on this week on the Super Coach Sword Play Potty. So uh, it will be a must watch episode, let me tell you that much. Uh, very quickly, though, if I'm looking here, Melbourne Collingwood uh, with my loops, it's got to be definitely before this Essendon game. So it's got to come from here. Geez, um, probably for me, Darcy Cameron's been playing well. Kudos to Cameron. I might, it's probably Flanders, isn't it? Probably Flanders early on. And then, oh, Chockey. I've had him in the run a few weeks in a row. I'll probably go with Chockey, I think, at this stage. Uh, no there. Don't know what's going to happen with Bedford. Probably can't tag Bont anyway. Wish I encrypts, but I don't. I'm not really confident here at Optus. Just Drew, get in there. Go on, yeah. Schlong. Yep, that's probably where I'll go. Flanders into Neil. So, uh, guys, that is it for this week. Uh, very, very quickly. Just look at the leagues here. So, uh, the content legends, abs, much love. Shout out to you, brother. Oh, and I, I forgot. I do need to give a very, very special mention here as well before I end the video. Uh, so, yeah, got over abs there, but just... That, that's a luck thing. Abs uh, has had a much better season than me. So congratulations, great man. Just got over you there uh, this time, mate. Uh, Cutters SCT Challenge. Oh, look at that. The great man Pistol just could not get past the Pistol this week. So shout out to you, mate. Another one of my favourite people. Ripping Human is Pistol. Oh, now, Izzy, Izzy, you killed me this week. 2455, 2462. Uh, seven points, sorry. Seven points I lost you there. Congratulations, mate. Killing it there. Look at that, would you? 2507, defeated by Brentos. You kid me, two points. That's just ridiculous there. Uh, Janeth ended up taken out. Uh, sorry about that, brother. Uh, again, a much better player than me, but... Uh, yeah, I got the chockies there, mate, which was nice for me. Uh, Zach just managed to get over you, mate, in uh, DR2. Uh, well done there, mate. Some great competition. Izzy smashed me in the $100 cashy. That was just shattering. You know, I got in Sinclair. Izzy's got the secret weapon in Humphreys and just, you know, Freya on the bench as well. Well done, mate. Well deserved, buddy. Uh, Podmaster Seed 1. I took out Janeth. Oh, man, I've, I've, it's a, the right week to come up against poor Janeth with a donut. It almost feels like a very hollow victory here, to be quite honest. Um, like Cochin and Mitchell's Brownlow. Sorry, boys, little drive by there. Geez, just got by Dano here. Now, Dano, Dano, you run the um oh, mate, I've on I've got the logo on my head. I have to give you guys a shout out on Twitter, mate. I, I forget off the top of my head. Um oh, well, I listen to you as well, mate, with Pado as well there. Um, shout out to you, brother. Just got ahead of you there, luckily, mate. Uh, Janeth again. Uh, Timmy the Gilbus. Jeez. 
Very poor week from you, mate. But eating donuts is nothing you can do there. Now, Mini Monk, well done, mate. We've had an awesome battle with these overall rankings, mate. Um, we've sort of leapfrogged each other from week to week. I have a good one. You have a good one. I have a bad one. You have a poorer one. But, mate, super, super from you this week, my friend. Well done there, Brendan. Awesome work, pal. Um, and then the members, gee, just got over Cody there. 24. No, I didn't. I oh, bugger you, Cody. Thought I had you there, mate. Uh, Spills his SC Premier. Came up against George. A ripping week inside the top 500. Well done, mate. And uh, I just bet Fab there. Jordan De Blowy, nice one in the A Team League. Uh, 34 out of 493 in the DRSC Cup. So that's it for this video, guys. I said it's going to be my shortest one. I've gone on and on as I always do. But uh, much love. Thanks very much again. And a very, very special shout out. Now, it's a sad day in the Supercoach community because JD's just put out a tweet in the last, I think, four or five hours to say that uh, he's retiring from the Supercoach content creating game. Now, JD, just a personal um, thank you from me, mate. A shout out from me. I am very much a regular watcher of all your videos, mate. You have, in my humble opinion, one of the best Supercoach brains, if not the best Supercoach brain out there, mate, with your analytics you know your knowledge your wisdom you do some really deep dives and you know your reviews just aren't about you know this play is going okay you go really you know deep into that reasoning you're a big data man you love your tables as well um mate there so look a big thank you for me um i'm actually very sad to be quite honest mate i, I there'll be a big hole to fill in my weekly uh, viewing routine uh, obviously you know i have a while off super coach now i know but uh look heading into next year mate I sort of don't know what I'll do without some of your videos. I'll, um, yeah, in all honesty, mate, it will, yeah, leave a big gap in uh, my weekly viewing. Um, because I really rate, rate you as a coach. I get some great tips off you. It doesn't matter how how long you've been playing the game. You get great tips off each other. But um, in particular, JD, um, yeah, just just love the way that you go about it, mate. You're um, yeah, yeah, you're really data focused, and and that's your strengths, I think, mate. But um. Yeah, the way that you deliver things, mate, it's always fantastic. I know that George Zeno will miss you on the potty as well. All the best in your future endeavours um, content-wise, if that's where you're going to go. If not, um, the last four years have been wonderful, mate. You've uh, given so much back to uh, everyone that plays the game of Supercoach and fantasy as well. You play across both formats and do a little bit of fantasy stuff um, as well, I know, mate. But, uh, yeah, for me and... Uh, all the Supercoach community, uh, us boys at the Supercoach Swordplay Potty as well. Thank you very much, mate. All the best. And uh, you'll be sadly, sadly missed. And uh, on that note, guys, time to win the videos. So thanks, JD. Thank you very much to everyone that's still watching. I know that the interest levels have dived right down at the moment. But one more week, guys, and we are done for the season. So I hope that you're all well. I'll see you tomorrow night. No, Tuesday night for the Swordplay Potty with our very, very special guest.